Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video we are going to take a look at Shining Resonance Refrain for the PC. The game was developed and published by Sega and is a JRPG all about wars, dragons, music and romance. Is it any good though? Well, here's the details in the review. The game's story is about a boy named Yuma who has the power of the Shining Dragon within him. The story starts off with him being held prisoner, and then someone from another kingdom comes and frees him. Once free, you learn all about the Warring Nations, and then reluctantly agree to use your powers to assist the Dragonettes. Everything in this game starts off brilliantly with the game's story, but then everything suddenly starts to suffer round about chapter 2. You very quickly realise that the plot ends up suffering due to everything else within the game. It's either this or that which ends up affecting your enjoyment of this. I'll go into more detail in the other sections, but if I were to use a quick example to explain what I mean, then the only two games I can think of that make a perfect example are Tales of Systeria and Xenosaga 2. Shining Resonance Refrain has a good mix of characters for you to enjoy, and I found that the characters were the highlight of this game for me. I loved Kirika the moment that I saw her, she's beautifully designed, her personality suits her appearance, she evolves as a person throughout the progress of the story, and you very quickly grow very deeply fond of them. It's the same for Sonya, Rin, and all the others too. I wasn't too keen on Numa or Agram at the beginning, because I felt like they were being a little too hard in pushing Cowardly Character A or Edgelord Character B. This does change though, and you do end up warming to them as you spend a lot more time interacting with them at all the camps, the cities, and at the inns. When it comes to the game's gameplay, it's at this stage of the game that it starts to falter and show its problems. When you first start out, you don't think much about the gameplay as you assume that most things will open up the more you play. This does happen, but it really is not what you would expect. For starters, this game takes a lot of new risks, and removes a lot of staples from what you would expect to find in an RPG. You can't buy new weapons, you can't buy armour, you can't buy accessories. All you can do is tune up your weapon by changing its tune. This means that if your first choice for tuning is level 10, and then you pick another, it goes down to level 1. Doing this lowers all your stats and abilities, and I just don't really see a point in why you would want to do this. There's then the friendship wheel, which gives you a lot of options for your pairing, but the game never really tells you what any of it actually means, or what any of it actually does. Another problem is that the game is exceptionally grindy, and has some of the most stupid difficulty spikes I've ever seen in any game. By the time you get to end of chapter 2, the game expects you to win a boss battle where you'll only be around level 15, maybe 17, and then the boss will be around level 35 or 37. In short, you get one hit killed constantly, and the only solution is to grind your levels for days upon end. And here is another problem, that's just not fun or enjoyable at all. The combat is very repetitive, and usually always boils down to mash button B or mash button Y. You also don't get much experience either, and the computer controlled character AI is perhaps the worst in any game that I have seen. The characters will either A stand still and do nothing whilst the enemy attacks them, or B they'll charge into enemy firing range no matter what order you give them, and die right away. The gameplay is very similar to that of Tales of Hysteria's, but amazingly it manages to be less fun than even that. The graphics are good, and they are very well done. They clearly have had a lot of put and care put into them, be it the characters or locations which you will go to and explore. I don't really have anything bad to say about them, because they do do their job perfectly in what they're meant to do, in drawing you in within this game and its world. 
with refrains locations, I feel it's a 50-50 split. The locations which you'll go to and explore are really well created and have obviously had a lot of thought put into them. Going to places like Sleepy Hollow, the Tropical Island, Coastal Cave, and many others is pure wonder for the eyes. However, if you're trying to do all of the side quests, you're going to be going back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. A lot. And here is yet another problem. There is no fast travel in this game. There are some type of rune stones that you can use later on for certain locations, but for the most part you're going to be running around a hell of a lot. I really want to say yes to this. I really do. But I just can't. Shining Resonance Refrain is perhaps the most perfect example of a game almost getting everything right, but then failing on absolutely everything and just being mediocre in absolutely everything. The gameplay is too repetitive, it's too grindy, the combat isn't any fun at all, the characters and story have high and low points, and in the end you're just left feeling that everything is a chore. And it really shouldn't be like that. Well that's it for this video guys, thank you for listening, thank you for watching, and please subscribe.